As human beings, we have always reached for the stars. Leaving our planet is the greatest frontier ever encountered by mankind. To see Earth from outer space, to glimpse the infinity of the cosmos, to float weightlessly. These are the dreams of a special few who have made it their life's purpose to become pioneers in outer space. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. They were the dreams of a boy from Grand Rapids. A boy who grew up to become the astronaut, Roger Bruce Chaffee. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. The year was 1962. The United States had entered into a fierce competition with the Soviet Union to explore space travel and ultimately to put a man on the moon. Following the successful Soviet launch of Sputnik, and Yuri Gagarin's orbit around the Earth, President John F. Kennedy made it the nation's singular objective to win the space race. And the new Apollo program was destined to do just that. Our shot at the moon gave birth to a nation of unified optimism and a generation of scientists and engineers inspired by the romance of space and fired by patriotism. Along with fellow astronauts Gus Grissom and Edward White, Roger Chaffee was our nation's choice to fulfill this promise. To become part of the family of Apollo astronauts who set out to put a flag on that distant moon. Growing up in Grand Rapids, Roger built and flew model airplanes with his father, a former barnstorming pilot. As a student at Central High School, he was fascinated with math and physics. Long before the space race had begun, Roger had set his sights on getting to the moon. Focus, skill, and determination led him to the U.S. Navy, where he excelled as a pilot, flying critical missions during the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1963, Roger was chosen from 1,800 elite applicants to join the astronaut corps. He was the very best America had to offer. For the next two and a half years, he underwent rigorous training before being selected as the pilot for the Apollo 1 flight. Finally, the moon was within Roger's reach. But on January 27, 1967, tragedy struck. Roger Chaffee, the boy who had what it took to become a Navy fighter pilot and to ride a rocket to the moon, boarded his Apollo 1 spacecraft with Gus Grissom and Edward White for a pre-flight test. A flash fire, fueled by pure oxygen, broke out in the command module claiming the lives of these brave men. His life cut short before he could realize his dream. The nation mourned a hero, and the people of Grand Rapids mourned the loss of a classmate, neighbor, son, husband, father, friend. But his courage lived on. Fueled by the lessons of this tragedy, Americans now focus more energy than ever to safely conquer the moon. As one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Two and a half years later, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong lived out Roger's dream. Apollo 11 landed successfully on the moon and proved to this country once more that it is indeed the astronauts who carry the spirit for our nation and bring hope and optimism for all the world. Today, at the Roger B. Chaffee Planetarium, we honor him, not just for dying a hero, but for living like one. A man who followed his dreams and put everything on the line for what he believed in. Because of Roger Chaffee, we are inspired to look beyond the horizon and continue to reach for the stars.
Welcome to the Roger B. Chaffee Planetarium. The planetarium would not have been possible without the support of these partners. A special thanks to the Weggy Foundation. Do all the good you can, for as many people as you can, for as long as you can, for all the right reasons.